I see that you're not providing any guidance for full year 21 and, you know, you're three quarters of the way through your year, the way you account for it. So just how much of uncertainty is still attached to what remains of this financial year for you? Yeah, I, I think it's a it's a very telling point, as you said. You know, you know, we're into the to you know at the end of the year, and we we don't have the visibility yet on what this is going to be for the full year that ends on the 30th of September. But what we do see that is that capacities are increasing. We do see that demand is coming through, particularly in in mainland Europe. So we have about two thirds of the booking and the sales intake we have today is, is really coming in from mainland Europe. And normally that would be pre-pandemic, 50-50 split between the UK and mainland Europe. So mainland Europe is leading the way in the recovery. And how much do you see that being, uh, you know, the story of the next quarter then, Johan? You say that the UK is very is behind what it, where it normally would be on bookings. You're transferring capacity from the UK to the EU. Is, is that going to be the story of the summer? Well, that, that remains to be seen, and, but, but it's also different when you're looking at this from, uh, from market to market. If you're looking at Holland as an example, we're actually flying more capacity. We have more seats available, more sales going on there even before the, the pandemic started. So we can see that the, the restrictions as they are being unwinded is really releasing that pent up demand. And we know that that demand is also here in the UK, but it all comes back to the restrictions. And uh, whilst the restrictions are in place in terms of unnecessary testing, as an example, that is going to have consequences for, for people's willingness to book. But there's no doubt that we're going in the right direction in here. What we've been focusing on at EasyJet is to make sure that we have the flexibility, as you say, to shift capacity from routes that, that, that we had planned. And we're seeing later that that is demand is going elsewhere. We can then move that capacity into to other routes of it as well. And that's been a big part of how we've been preparing ourselves for the recovery. Uh, Johan, there's a big focus on the fast-changing regulatory environment that you have to operate in, of course. There's also fast-changing guidance from various health authorities. Now, obviously, you don't fly to the US, but I wonder what you make of the fact that the US CDC has advised Americans not to visit the UK. Is this something that, you know, will seep through and will start to weigh on inbound? I mean, there's not that much inbound into the UK right now, I'm guessing, but uh, is it something that is going to, 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 to concern you, that kind of messaging? Well, we've been calling out for that there should be a common approach on how uh, countries are opening up travel, but one has to also respect that the situation is different in, in different countries. So, you know, we have to live with the fact that the, the governments are taking decisions that they consider is the best for, for the population. But it's definitely true that it could be much more uh, sensible if there was a common approach between countries and jurisdictions on how they were opening up. Because the, the key drivers that impact hospitalizations are really the same. It's, it's about the level of infections, about the different variants and concerns, and then also about the, the, the uh, infection uh, rates and the cases. And you take all of that into consideration, you can see that in all the markets where we are operating, you could unwind restrictions. Uh, and, and, for instance, in the UK, much of Europe could be placed on that green list as an example. And Holland is a good good uh, place when you look at it and to say that when you have transparency on what is actually deemed to be safe travel, that means the customers mm. can plan for it and, and the companies can plan for it as well. And that is what we're looking for also here in the UK. And some of that fast-changing regulation has led to... A, 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 a... An addition to the traffic light system recently, France now in a category all of its own. It was amber, which was going to mean that from yesterday, those who were double vaccinated would not need to quarantine on their return to the UK. Uh, now we have amber plus status, which means even the double vaccinated must, uh, must uh, self-isolate. How much of an impact is that going to have on your business, Johan? Are you already seeing UK bookings to France dropping off? Well, it, it won't have a significant impact. The flows we had in terms of the, the share of the program that we have available for sales is between uh, two, two and a half percent, really, between UK and France. So it doesn't have a major impact on that. And if we're looking at the bookings that took place over the, the weekend and here also on yesterday, there was no really significant changes into the pattern. But I do think it, it raises the point that, that there is a concern about the reliability of the traffic light system and the confidence that people have to book. We have introduced a, a number of policies that makes it easier and very flexible for people to change their booking to 
to be able to give the confidence. But surely when these things are introduced that really no heads up, no warnings, and it's still very difficult to track the reasons behind that, that new so-called category, it, it doesn't help the confidence here in the UK. We are facing another problem here for business in the UK, Johan, and that is what's been dubbed the pandemic. So the track and trace system, asking people to isolate after contact with with COVID cases. Is this a problem for you at EasyJet? Is this taking out large numbers of your staff? No, not not uh, currently, and uh, we continue, of course, to you know follow the, the the recommendations and the rules by governments in all the jurisdictions that that we are operating in. Um, but our, our crew are taking lateral flow tests after they're flying as well to make sure that, that they are not affected by the virus. And if they are, that, of course, they don't go to work. So we'd be preparing ourselves uh, as much as possible for that. And we're following the guidelines also then from the international organizations like ICAO and, and EASA and, of course, also the CAA. And do you have any policy on whether staff should keep using the track and trace app or whether they should turn it off? I'm just interested in businesses in various sectors, whether they have policy on that or leave it up to individuals. We leave it up to the individuals to follow the rules and the guidelines that exist in all the countries that we are operating in. And, and those do differ. So, I mean, that, that is a challenge. But, but the most important is to make sure that in the countries that we are, that we're following the rules and the guidelines and the recommendations together with also the recommendations that's coming out of the international aviation uh, authorities, such as ICAO and, and EASA, and then also the local regulators. So that's what we're going to continue to do. We're looking at oil prices, 69.35 on Brent. I haven't checked the, uh, the jet fuel price just this morning, Johan, but certainly all of these oil products have been rising recently. Crude prices up uh, some 40% before the recent retrenchment. Um, how are you absorbing those, those higher costs, those higher fuel costs? Well, it, it, it's not the, the biggest of the concerns that we have at the moment. The, the major focus that we have right now is to make sure that we can shift capacity to where we see the demand. The yield environment on the capacity that, that we fly is, is pretty healthy. And uh, we want to make sure that we continue with the focus that we have to only do flying that generates a positive contribution for the company. And that is, of course, a mix about the, the capacity we have for sale, the load factor, and, and then also the yield. Uh, so it's not a major concern that we're looking at in terms of the fuel right now. The, the biggest concern and the focus we have right now is to make sure that we continue with being flexible so we can shift capacity to the market that is really doing well and accelerating. And that's what we're going to continue to focus on. EasyJet's share price was under pressure yesterday, Johan. It was in good company. We were seeing selling of travel stocks globally. We were seeing uh, cyclical stocks being sold off, real concerns around the Delta variant. What message would you give to investors about the resilience of the business with that kind of share price performance in mind? Well, I, I think it's fair to say that, you know, I, I never expected this to be a straight line recovery. I think that this was a situation that was always going to be in three phases. You had a survival phase for the industry, you have a, a phase of recovery, and then you're going to have a growth phase. And I think we're definitely part of the recovery phase. EasyJet came in as one of the strongest airlines in Europe. We've taken a lot of action to make sure we can manage through the crisis, come out as a winner. But we're also the largest airline in the UK. And UK has had the toughest travel restrictions out of any of the countries on which we are operating. And I think that is also a reflection of, about that. But in many cases, this airline has been transformed for the better throughout this pandemic. And I can't wait to come out of this and compete in, in, in normal times with less restrictions being in place.